I went out to dinner sometime last week with a group of friends and we went to a bar and we had some drinks and yapped about life. One of my friends, he's like 24 and he was already talking about how he feels like he's going nowhere. He feels like he has no future. So this guy, he's actually a wrestler. He wants to make it big and being like WWE or AEW or something like that. He really wants to do that. It's his dream. And he's been working on this dream for about six years now. I, I, ever since he was 18, he's been practicing wrestling and he's making progress, but he's stagnating a lot. And I know this feeling because I haven't put out music in like six months or so, but for those who are familiar, I was do, doing music for a few years and there was a video that is now deleted that some of you might remember where I almost cried on camera because I was talking to an A&R at a label and they said they liked my music and my image and then they pitched my music to an executive and the executive declined me. And it made me extremely upset. I don't know if you guys remember that video. And he said, as I quote, this is not what we're looking for right now. And ever since then, I felt a bit stagnated because there have been several times where I felt like I was reaching towards a goal, but I got trapped. I got pushed right back down. So what my friend, he's been wrestling at the independent circuit and there's and these uh, small wrestling shows and scouts are showing up, but nobody sees potential or a spark in him. Now, in my opinion, does he suck at what he does? I don't think so. I like his character or wrestling gimmick. I think he's a good person. He has a lot of charisma. It's just he's not catching the right person's eyes. So he feels like, listen, it has been six years since he's been doing this. When does he hang up the towel? You know, that's how he feels. And he's like, it's making him very depressed. All that money he invested into wrestling and trainers because P.S., you can't just walk into a wrestling ring. You have to get trained and stuff like that. That stuff costs a lot of money. To participate in some of these training schools as well, it's a lot of bread. And like I was mentioning with what happened to me, I also invested a lot of money into my stuff. Have I made money back on my music? Yes. Do I have memorable moments on TikTok and Instagram? A few songs do. But did I ever make it as a famous artist or something? No. Does it bother me? It used to bother me a lot because that's the only thing I cared about. I used to have like 10,000 plus monthly listeners on Spotify when Samantha came out and then I already banked out on that, but now I have like 2,000. Like I'm not, I'm just not putting out new music. So naturally the numbers go down. I've been posting more on YouTube than I put out music now. And here's the thing, I'm getting old. Like my friend, he's getting older now too. 24 is a young age, but there's a time where it's like, yo, what if you get injured? And what if this all doesn't work out? Now, I can't give anyone a lesson here about success because I'm not a successful person. I have a business that I've been running for nearly 10 years and it has made me not be able to work for someone else. I have a YouTube channel that I've neglected so much. I, I get like a thousand or two or 3,000 views per videos about, right? I, I guess looking at the channel right now, sometimes less, okay? You know, sometimes I don't hit the thousand mark and I already went over my music thing. But here's something I can say that I've learned throughout the years, even though nothing I'm doing has necessarily blown up or made it as a career. Here's the thing. I have security. What do I mean? I always had multiple sources of income. My business, YouTube and music pay me. YouTube and music, not so much, but it's something I have going on to put some extra change in my pocket. And who knows? You know what I'm saying? I, I can make a video. It could blow up. It doesn't hurt putting out the video, right? When I was working on music as my number one goal, I knew if things never worked out, although it would make me upset, it's okay because I have a skill set with other things. If music didn't work out, I still have YouTube I could go back to. If both don't work out, I could still make money through other ways. I always have a hustle. Even years ago when I was doing modeling, let me tell y'all, if you've seen my Instagram, I modeled for Vogue magazine several times and did commercial modeling. Modeling doesn't pay like that. It really doesn't pay. I got paid once for an Apple commercial and I only made a couple hundred bucks. And that, oh, that sounds awesome. A couple hundred bucks, that, that's something not cool. But yo, every other time I got booked for a fashion show or something else, they only gave me clothes and a pat on the back. Did I mention all that traveling? They didn't, they didn't pay for my traveling to go to these shoots. They didn't, they didn't pay for my look or anything like that. So during the modeling days, you know what I would do? I wasn't uploading on YouTube during that time. I would go on Twitch and stream every day. And meanwhile, I would also be working on my business. So I made my, I made sure I always gave myself options to put myself with some money in my pocket. And it's not always about the money, right? Let's put that to the side, all right? It's also about the goals you have, right? I think you should always have not necessarily a backup plan, but you should have something to sustain yourself while you work on plan A. My friend, 
he doesn't have any sustainability. He's nose diving 100% into wrestling. Meanwhile, he's not really working on other skill sets. He's not building on something else in the side while he's doing a main goal. He's in he's in college, but I'll get into that in a second. If you don't if you don't have anything else going on, you put yourself in a position where you can actually fail at life. This is what happens to people who put all their eggs in one basket. I know there's a saying that goes don't have a plan B because it distracts from plan A. I know they're saying that goes, I'm sure you may have heard of that before, but you should always prepare for the worst. I feel like the smartest people prepare for the worst. You should over prepare, then go with the flow. You don't want to end up focusing on plan A and then something unfair and unpredictable happens. And now you're left with nothing. This is why people say you should finish college while you're focusing on some other goal because it's a safety net for you. And everyone's situation is different. Saying that you shouldn't have a plan B is survivorship bias. Of course, someone who is, who is successful in a specific thing is going to tell you to work hard and focus on your goal. Of Duh, what else are you going to do otherwise? But their come up and their background and life is way different than yours. They may have had it easier or harder. Some, and... Even though they had it harder, it may have tweaked their brain a little bit to be a different person. Sometimes success can be luck. And if you disagree with that, are you going to deny the many people you know in life who are successful just because they just so happen to be in the right room at the right time in the right place? Or some algorithm helped them out luckily or the right eyes caught on to them? And look, you can increase the chances of getting the right opportunities by maneuvering through life smarter, but there's a taint of luck with that as well. A lot, of, a lot of trying things out in life is throwing something against the wall and hoping it sticks. And if it doesn't stick the first time, it doesn't mean give up. You can just keep throwing at the wall more and more. Hopefully it does stick. Sometimes you have to keep going no matter what. Unfortunately, yet fortunately in life, some people, they throw something against the wall and it's stuck the first attempt. How is that? And sometimes that's not fair. You know, that's not fair. How come it's stuck for them? It's not sticking for you. Again, everyone has a different experience. Of course, the person who has something stuck on the wall the first or second time is going to be biased about their journey to success. While they threw it at the wall once or twice succeeded, some others haven't had that luck. So sometimes, look, you got to accept that you can fail at life if you don't have the right security. I know a lot of you watching or listening are in school right now and you have a goal to get your degree and get this career that you may have or may want, right? Listen, I dropped out of college several times and it's because I didn't like the work that it entailed. For example, when I first went to college, I wanted to be a neurosurgeon until I had a medical class at my college and I said, I don't like this. I'm not passionate about the work. I thought I wanted to be a surgeon. I thought I was passionate about being a surgeon until I finally got a little taste of what the field is like. And I said, I don't want to do this. And that's the thing. I have the blessing to be able to drop out of college. college. Lucky, lucky for me. Some of y'all are stuck in college and you have to finish. Otherwise, your parents might give you a hard time or otherwise, I don't know. Maybe you have some other circumstances. And again, you may not like the career. You're going to spend numerous years in college going for it. And you can't even assure yourself you'll get a job after you graduate. There are so many people without a job with a degree right now. It's terrible. And then now you're looking like a bozo because you're like, wow, I spent so much money and years in college and I can't even get a job I want or rather I don't even like the work that I'm doing. And even if you and look, if you have no other skill set or backup plan, then what? You're going to feel like you failed. You put everything into one dream or hope or career and now you're left just sitting there. So what my friend, even though he's putting his eggs in all one basket with wrestling, as I mentioned earlier, he's going to college too, but he's only going because his parents want him to go. He has to go to college or he's getting kicked out of the house and he has zero passion for school. Even though going to college is his plan B, if he can't find passions in other things, is this really going to make him happy? Again, if he gets injured or he can't do this anymore, this wrestling thing, he's going to feel like he failed at life. And then you're just going to sit there wondering for the rest of your life, like, damn, like, I, what if I made it? Like, you know what I'm saying? That's, that's a depressing feeling. And I'm not saying he's not going to make it, okay? Because I really hope he does. I showed up to numerous of his wrestling shows, supporting him and cheering him on. So, has, so have my friends. We all showed up together to his wrestling shows. But he has to put himself in a mental space where he has to understand Yo, if this doesn't work out, I failed at life because I didn't prepare for the worst. 
That's the thing. This is like, this is like going on a ship or boarding a ship without emergency boats. Um, emergency boats, sorry. Why would you go on a ship that doesn't have escape boats? You know what I'm saying? If, if the ship crashes or something bad happens, you're going to drown and have no escape plan. You need an escape plan. You need to, quote, have a just-in-case moment. Try different things in life. You might like it. I might find, like... The things that I look for in life, sometimes I might find a passion in. Sometimes you might. And then you'll think about it as it being a safety net. And again, use me as an example. I have many passions in my life. I love to code. I like making these videos for you guys. I also like making music. And I have passions, other passions in my life. Remember I said I was going to do EMT classes? I want to be a paramedic maybe. I still have passions in the medical field. I just don't want to be a neurosurgeon. You know what I'm saying? But look, if one fails or if I lose passion for one, I still have other things. Let's say I let's say I take the EMT classes and I don't like it. Okay, well, I still have other plans. I, I still have other hustles, you know? Even though I haven't put out music in like half a year, I'm still working on my business, working on YouTube. And again, those EMT classes, I'm, I'm going to get myself in shape. I'm always keeping myself secure so I don't feel like I'm a failure, which is subjective at the end of the day because people measure success on their own bias. And some people, you're hard on yourselves about your own success bias, right? And quote, successful people are always going to have a survivorship bias because they had their own background and circumstances. So make sure you have security in life and hold yourself together while you hustle and grind things out. Life is never a straight line to success. Anyway, this episode is found on Spotify and YouTube. Let me know what you guys think. Times Square. A, A, A. Nightmare 7 a.m. in the morning though. No surprise. Times Square's you and I under those lights. No disguise. Uh, don't tell me everything you wanted was a lie. All those city lights, it's an endless night. Never expected you to bring me so much life. Close my eyes too long, then it's time to say goodbye. Let's dance all night until the stars don't show glow. Till the sunrise, then we go so low. Making up for all the times that we were low. Let's make some memories before we do go. Let's dance all night until the stars don't show glow. Till the sunrise, then we go so low. Making up for all the times that we were low. Let's make some memories before we do go. Caution. Wait a moment, keep my heart locked away, it's filled with emotion Gave the key to you, right in front of you is open Hey, try your best to not leave it broken Oh, it's been a while since you know it's frozen 